Check it out. We're live, third phase of moon. Blake Cousins here. Welcome back, everybody from around the world. Thanks for tuning in. It is time to take your calls from around the world in regards to this UFO phenomenon happening right now. Let me tell you, lots of information uh, coming in from around the world. Let me say this again. Our Facebook is lighting up with submissions. Our YouTube channel has all kinds of information for you to take a look at. Third Phase Moon is the place to share your information. Have you worked at a government facility working on reverse engineered tech and you want to tell somebody about it? Hey, you could do it right here at Third Phase Moon. We could keep your name anonymous, but we want to hear the information. So we're reaching out to you. If you've worked at a military base that has dealt with reverse engineered alien technology and you need to share this, Share it now because it's been around since 1947. There's been uh, this technology in our hands. There's people that are getting old, and they haven't shared their insight yet, and we want to hear it from them. So if you know anybody that's worked at Area 51, has dealt with any alien technology, please tell them to call Third Phase of Moon. The number right now is 347 347- Nine three four zero three seven eight. That's our live number. We are live on Third Phase Moon, and wow, we have a lot of callers calling in from around the world. So you know what? Let's get to it. Let's bring them in. Let's bring them all in. Let's let's start right now. You're live, Third Phase Moon, area code eight zero four. Welcome to the show. Hey, hello. Hello, how's it going? I'm good. Hi, this is just Teresa Kovalovsky. I'll just call to say I loved, loved, loved your live show this evening. Wow, uh, Teresa, you got to join us live on our uh, live video show that we did for the first time on Third Phase? I sure did. I was just lucky enough to catch it. I'm a big fan of y'all. I spoke with you once before on um, your radio a while back. Wow, Teresa, appreciate uh, the call in. And doing live events on our Third Phase of the Moon YouTube channel might be something that we might be doing more often because that was a lot of fun. Oh, I to. Yeah, we got to deal with the people. We get to share videos in real time and uh, get to get the basically the audience reaction. It doesn't get much better than that. But we're on live radio, and that's pretty cool too. And w- again, where are you calling in from? Hopewell, Virginia. All right, all right. So um, let me tell you, have you ever seen a UFO out in your area in Virginia? Well, I have seen something strange. Um, I um, sent you a picture of it. It was a it was, we're coming back really early in the morning before sun came up, and um, you really when I, the picture I sent you, you really have to you know zoom it in really close. It's like the third bright light in the top center, and it's I, I thought it was maybe a drone, but it was really big. It was like a gold color, and I actually got an antenna that looked like it was coming off the top of it. But, you know, wow. who am I? That's I wasn't so sure that's what I was seeing. But um, I sent you guys several pictures, so hopefully you might be able to find them. We'll take a look, Teresa. Appreciate yeah. the call in. And uh, you stay tuned. You never know when we're going to do these live up, uh, video uploads on our third phase. That was a lot of fun, and I'm sure glad you got to join us, Teresa. Thank you, have you a good so night. much. Anytime. Hey, stick around. Stick around. There's going to be some probably pretty amazing information Coming in tonight, Teresa. So let's get to the next caller. You just never know who's going to be calling in and from where and what kind of knowledge they have. 828, you are live right here at Third Phase of Moon. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Blake. This is uh, Skid Vicious once again. I called in uh, twice before a while back. About oh, cool, ago. cool. Um, wow. yeah, it was concerning the... Uh, uh, the phenomenon and the uh, clouds where it looked like uh, plasma beams moving around and whatnot. But anywho, um, I, I wanted to share a story with you guys. Uh, I've heard stories being told on the show before concerning uh, night terrors and uh, the link between that and possible the draconian race, possibly feeding off of uh, people's fear like the sleep paralysis phenomenon. Okay. Have you experienced this? I have, like, uh, through a lot of my life, and I think I defeated them. I wanted to share uh, how I believe I have done that. So Um, how do you go about defeating 
a basically a night terror, a draconian, uh, something pretty much evil. Tell us, tell us, how, how'd you do it? Well, I came to the realization of what its purpose of it being there, you know, with me. I, I never personally seen it, but I've heard the stories before and the similarities and the, the feeling and the, the absolute terror were like so hand in hand with what I've experienced that I can only conclude that that's what I was experiencing as well. And so the next time I had that experience, I thought to myself, okay, this is an entity. It's feeding off my fear to survive. It needs this to live. And who am I to deny another entity to live? And so I gave it permission. Like I said to myself, I know what you're doing, and I allow this. And the feeling immediately went away, and I have not had another experience in the past eight months. Wow. So basically, we have control of our own destiny and our own fears. Let me tell you, did you see the gymnast that broke his leg during the Rio Olympics? It was an incredible outbreak and very unfortunate for the uh, for the gymnast. But what was weird is everybody noticed his leg contorted in a, in a way that shouldn't be that's not normal and everybody was running away with their hands over their heads in fear and in shock but the person that remained calm was the gymnast not a flinch on him totally in control he knew it wasn't a good thing but man he knew how to control his emotions and maybe that has something to do with it got to control your emotions hey thanks a lot for uh, calling in sir thank you well you but uh it was an amazing uh human spirit to, you know, when you're dealing with strange entities, dark entities, you have the power to, uh, to tell them to go away. It's just all up to you in most cases, in most cases, sometimes, sometimes I'm sure there's uh, abductions that are against our will. In most cases, I believe we're invited and it's not, uh, something that we need to be afraid of. Okay. Let's get to the next caller. Let's bring him in. Eric code five, six, one, you're live third phase moon. Thanks for waiting. All right. We're going to move on to the next caller. We'll make some uh, room for the lines. The number again is three, four, seven, nine, three, four, zero, three, seven, eight. That's a number to call in live to third phase moon. We are a, uh, we're on air right now. Let's go to area code 573. Um, Do you read me? Is it me? Do we got 573? Is 573 there? Yeah, you're live. Hi. Uh, I do have a story to tell. Um, first of all, uh, I enjoy your show. Uh, I'm calling from mid-Missouri. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Thanks for calling like in. The, just like the last person uh explain like it kind of you know jogged my memory on what I was going to say uh like I believe like shadow people are aliens because like uh like one time like there was this shadow person above my bed and everything and it moved in my room and everything and it's like sleep paralysis and everything you can't move all all you can move is like your eyes and stuff and this thing was like hovering over me swaying like from side to side like directly in front of my face it was like really scary and everything next thing I know I was like in a white room and it felt like I was floating and everything it's like nothing underneath me it felt like I was like in an alien ship or something like that. And uh, like, well, the dark beings in my room and everything, those are separate from what I saw in the white room because there's these things they, like aliens, like gray aliens, they surrounded me. But before that, they came out of the wall, like through the wall. 
and they did a bunch of tests and experiments and everything. I was trying to talk to it, but I couldn't say anything. It's like telepathic. Like I was saying stuff through my head, and they were saying things back. And, uh, like, they were, like, explaining, like, you'll be okay and blah, da, 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 you'll be back in your bed and, uh, like, stuff like that. Like, you'll, you'll be fine and everything. And, but the last, the last alien said to me was, like, your, your race is doomed in the next few years. And this happened, like, uh, four years ago, five years ago. So has so we're right around this part of this possible intervention, saying that we're doomed. Uh, has the time come and gone, or are we through the clear now? What do you think? Oh, well, I do watch your show. I watch also a bunch of other YouTube channels and everything. I watch Secure Team. Secure Team the other day mentioned that there's a psychic that that predicted with the Bible and Nostradamus between the two, he predicted that the world was going to end with a alien invasion within the next two years, possibly in 2017. That was like, yeah, yeah, you know, this is, you know, predictions are one thing and Nostradamus is, yeah, he's come up with some theories that have seemed like they've come to fruition, but, you know, dealing with a a source that you just said and taking quotes of uh, predicting the future. I, you know, I'm not into psychics. I, I, I don't know. I've yet to meet a psychic that's proven to me that they could read my mind or tell the future. But I, I'm open-minded to it. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Yellow Corvette 214 is saying on the flash chat that the secure team is are proven hoaxers. Let's see. Uh, yeah. It's, I guess, yeah. I don't know. I just, the predictions and then the fear mongering that the world's, we're all doomed. I don't think we're doomed, people. I think there's going to be a good, a good place coming up for all of us. And it has nothing to do with politicians or anything like that. It just has something to do with you, the people getting out the information. We're looking at, out for people that have worked at an Area 51 facility, worked on reverse engineered alien technology, and they want to get the word out, and they want to get it out without any fear for their life. We're broadcasting live, so right now, once you speak up, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. So we're out there for good, hard evidence, good video evidence from the people. The predictions, uh, you know, that's that's a whole different uh, that's a whole different game, if you ask me. Let's. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next caller. Area code 281. You're live. Third phase of moon. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. It sounds like how's you're in an echo chamber. There you go. Much better. Where are you oh, calling hi, up from, sir? Uh, uh, my name's Dan, and I'm calling in from South Texas. Uh, All right, Dan. Uh, Welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh really enjoy the show. Uh, I actually um, had a I witnessed something the other night, uh, probably on Monday, about like nine or thirty at ten o'clock. I was taking my dog out, and uh, yeah, like right in front of me, off in the distance, you know, I saw uh, these lights. Like I don't know, it's just like stationary, you know. And I'm, I was looking at them, and I took my phone out because I could see it, you know, and I started videotaping it. And as soon as I started recording it, it started moving to my left, which is its right, I guess. You know, it started moving slowly, you know, and I was, you know, recording it. And unfortunately, my dog wasn't cooperating with me because it was on a leash, you know. And uh, it was pulling me and, I, you know, the phone was shaking. And But uh, finally, it, you know, went behind the apartments, you know, and I took my dog out and, you know, walked him around and came. I saw it again, so I started videotaping it again. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't a helicopter. It wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a plane, you know, it was just these mm, four orb, uh, circular lights that would flat, uh, you know, you know, kind of bounce on and off, on and off, you know, each one of them. And then a wreck of red light and, you know, 
it didn't gotcha. make do you think these things yeah. were um, do you think they were alive was it seemed like they were under intelligent control what's your gut feeling no nah, it was totally like a uh a, a sh- uh, an object uh, being controlled by some yeah, intelligent control, you know, it was a, a ship or, you know, an object, you know, totally, you know what I mean? But the thing about it is, you know, I showed the video to a couple of people and uh, they, you know, they obviously said it was, you know, look like a drone, but if you look at it, cause it was in the dark, if you look at it in the dark, you see these little uh, blue lights, like, like twinkly lights all around, like in a circular pattern around the object, like, like, like it, it's strange, like like it's almost like something's cloaked, and it's like these little twinkly lights are flashing on and off, and you can see them, and it's I don't know, you know, kind of to me it's like there's something there, but you can't see it, and these little little twinkly lights, little blue lights flashing all around, you know. Huh. The only thing you can see are sure. these. You, yeah, the, yeah. The, you know, it sounds it's weird because I get a lot of these videos. And yeah, obviously shooting at night is pretty hard to uh, figure out exactly what we're looking at. But when you're on the ground yourself with your own naked eye, you're looking at this stuff, you can't explain it. It's not a drone. You're not hearing anything. It sounds and looks like you you just can't make out what it is. And it seems like it's under intelligent control. It's hard telling what these things are. That's for sure. We We've received videos just recently that people are saying that these possibly cannot be drones. What are they then? What are they? That's that's the question. That's the big question. Uh, thanks a lot for calling in. Thank you, sir. Let's uh, let's move along. We got to get to all the callers. We have so many coming in tonight. We love it. Area code seven zero two. You're live. Third phase of moon. Welcome to the show. Hi, it's Chalice. I'm dying to talk to you. Say hi to everybody. Hey, Chalice. Welcome back to uh, Third Phase of Moon. It's been a while. How, how long has it been? Almost about two months, three months since we've had you on the show. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of recordings and seeing a lot of stuff. So basically, at our base here, they have been bringing in <coughs> regularly saucers within every 10 minutes. And the saucers change from a plane in front of everybody, turn out their lights like they are being brought in on their own. And I have all these recordings, and then they had this other one the next day putting up code numbers right in the sky. I got it all recorded. They shut down my Internet. I moved to four or five places trying to get this to you. But what you're seeing is, remember I told you how you build a planet, and you take the, the black matter, and then you take the, the water, and you make that planet, and it floats in a jar-like type, and then you put a t- uh, chip in it and you program it and these are what's flying around they're a live virus uh machine and my opinion but that's what i saw when i was a little girl and they can do things they just float around you know and you tell them well go do this or go do that they do it but the thing about these ships is nasa had to have shut this down because it was so obvious and it's crazy that one thing oh why is all this Media showers. Well, we all know why, because the planet hit past the sun, and when it happened, you know, we knew instantly what it was. So they're here. They're not going to end us. I don't see the world ending. I've seen 2018, and I've seen the future of when they went through the window at that place at Air 51 where you can jump through that portal, and it's all there. So if it's all there, then why would the world end? You know, come on, guys. But, um, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us, you could understand when I, when people want to predict a future and there's going to be doom and gloom and the world is going to come to an end. We, you know, I, I'm Father. more of a positive optimist, and you know, I'm not a big fan of people wanting to control people's lives and saying, "Oh, we're going to predict your future," or take uh, Notre Dame's words and say, "Oh, this is what's going to happen." I believe well, in real time. And I believe in Chalice. And I reached out to the public trying to get people from the inside that's been in Area 51 to call in. And now Chalice has joined us, which is really amazing. That's I really so, think you guys know the technology is real. And it's, it's, it's even on your phone, when I say it's a cube, they call it the W phone, but it's 
it can be turned into exactly what you guys really want to know. And the thing is, is this technology is so amazing. <laughs> Sorry, my dog. Um, we have like so many things that people have no clue what we're ahead. We're, they're a thousand years in advance. So you think a thousand years of children building these plants and making these decisions, and, and then you turn around and you say, okay, what about spores? Now, remember what I told you about the Rennies? They're going to say that they're using steroids. When they're not using steroids, that's how they're covering up their facts. They are Rennies. And they're here, and they're watching, and they're part of this Olympics, and that's a big thing for them. And I'm all for it. I love everyone. You know, I have a judge friend that is a reptilian, that is the sweetest, kindest lady there is, and I have all kinds of friends. But when you talk to these people and these species and you know, most most people out in space are like human. They're human. They're small, big, but they're human. When you're talking dimensions is when you get into the J-Rods and the species of the, you know, bees, locusts, birds, things like that. But when they started changing, they started offering up all of this technology. They're trying to show us anything you can imagine, they can do it now. So if you imagine, you see all these ships, and you see these, and I've watched them. I've watched these two helicopters surround me and my husband. And when they surrounded me, I was like, this is not going to stop. It's, it's going to get worse. They chased us down the highway, and it was, first it was ambulances, and then suddenly it was an ambulance helicopter. And, and we're thinking, okay, something's going on. So I, I overlooked it, you know, and then I realized there's a saucer there. They followed us where we went, and then they showed me what to watch. And I first I was watching it every night. I was thinking, oh, my God, you know, if he could just come here and see this for himself, maybe he could understand what I'm trying to tell the world right now. When they're bringing these planes in, no one's allowed to fly next to our base, for one. And for two, these recordings are like every 10 minutes. And then they shut off their lights. Okay, you don't shut your lights off next to a base. And then it's like they're bringing them in automatically. And they're floating in, and they're changing. It goes from a normal plane, and then it starts from a dot that jumps and jumps and jumps and jumps. And I got at least 50 recordings of this. So when I started to try to download them and give them to you, everything stopped me. I mean, my electricity went out. My Internet's gone. All this stuff is happening. We had to run again. People showed up and started searching my apartment, and then they searched my daughter's. So we had to leave again. But there's a guy who's capturing it here in town. His name is Steve Barone, and he has got the best footage of what I'm telling you is for real. And he's got a better camera than me because the one I had of the ship that was humongous above our house last night, there was a triangle. It was amazing. And my camera just looked at it like, nah, nah, I'm not recording it. And you have to ask permission. They, they can decide if you can see it, and they let you see it to show you its reality. But they won't let you record it to prove the ability. Yep, Steve has almost all my recordings and a lot better. <laughs> His is better than mine. And when they did the code words the next wow. day, that was amazing. I have that all on footage where they're code words, and I repeated the code word. Tweet it, it was bomb. And if you, um, what was it? The, hack, the hashtag, I wrote it all down when I did all of the um, codes. And I said, oh, my God, one's about a gun, one's about a beer, and then the other one's about a saucer. So it depends on what they were actually trying to tell us over Vegas. And then after that, suddenly planes just didn't stop. And then this beautiful show came with this big giant mothership. And then they all came around in a circle and they all started doing this. And we knew fast. And they were coming right up to our, right up to us and then showing us, look, look, look. And then I was like, okay. But I remember when I was little, when these guys had to get aboard these ships, my dad would tell me. To record and to understand what these ships are, they're a virus genetic thing. So when you're in this ship, you put your hand on it, it becomes part of you. So these men or women have to control with their mind this ship. Now, our species isn't that good, so we're learning. So they're going sideways, they're going up and down, they're trying to figure this out. But you can tell the ones that are the experts because they're the ones making it do all the little pretty stuff. But man... The technology is going to blow you guys out of the water because when they finally release it, let's see, 
I thought Hillary was going to release it. I mean, the deal was that, you know, maybe I would endorse her if she would come clean about 51. But honest to God, you know, she isn't going to come clean because if she does, then I thought she would. But maybe not. She's acting like it's not even existing. And without knowing the truth of this technology and the species that are among us right now that want to be out there in front of everybody. And people hate, you know, that, oh, my God, what if that's a Rennie? It's a human being, but it's not a human DNA. They look like us. They breathe like us. They got families like us. They're children like us. But they're not DNA of our. So that's how they're switching it over. And you know that these guys are big-time medal winners and all of this stuff. And when that, that leg broke, come on, we all knew what happened there. And when you can't use that, you know, they heal within a, a few times. So they have to still set out. It's, it's sad. If everyone knew the technology that they could take a leg and heal it right now, boom, it's not broken anymore in seconds. It's really painful, but it's there. It's right in front of you. You just put this little, like, <laughs> nano in your body and boom it's going to heal you and then you'll sit there and get up and walk away there's no death and they tell you when they say no death they mean no death we well, have uh, the ability yes there is a, a lot of questions and this is quite amazing having Chalice back on the radio show live and the information is coming in fast and furious let me tell you it is uh, quite amazing in my opinion I believe Chalice has no agenda. She's not being paid by anybody. She's just wanting nope. to share this information. And, and she's, this is quite amazing. And Chalice, uh, can we take a break? There's people that have questions for you. And then I know you're not afraid of any questions. So let's, nope. let's take a break. Okay. Everybody sit, sit tight. Third phase of the moon is going to be right back with Chalice and more callers from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon. Hang tight, everybody. Really good. live back on air taking uh, your calls from around the world and we have Chalice. Chalice is back and Chalice has um, she's quite an interesting woman. She's been through a lot and people have some questions for her and she's not afraid of questions and we're going to get to some callers too. We've got a lot of callers in from around the world. We'll try and get to you but Chalice is uh, special in my book. People love hearing what Chalice has to say. Thank you and, so much. Uh, no problem, Chal. Thank you. It's just, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have you on the show unless people really ask for Chalice. This whole chat room really lit up when you uh, were just announced that you're on the phone lines. People really like you. And there's, you know, there's people that totally don't believe one single word you're saying, obviously. I want them to see, I want them to see all the evidence that I got. I want them to know it's all reality. The neat part is, is once your mind is opened up, 
and you know that we have this technology, what, five years ago, ten years ago? I, I remember in 91 I told the kids, we got to get a computer. Do you understand? You're going to be walking around with a phone in your hand for the rest of your life, and it's going to be your everything. And all my kids were construction workers and lawyers, and they said, hell no, I ain't doing that. Now they got two phones. And the reason is is because technology is caught up. They've gotten these cameras that's everywhere they go. They know exactly what you're saying, like well, they're watching me right now. I don't care because <laughs> what they're going to do is they'll probably follow me down again and make me move again. But, <laughs> hey. Let me ask you, know you this, Challenge. Let me ask you this. We're talking, we're talking about this video earlier that uh, your friend Steve captured. Does Steve have a YouTube channel that we could take a look at that video? Yep. Steve Barone. Okay, let's. He, uh, well, best, let me, he has the best footage, and he gets right off the base, and he has the best footage I have seen. Well, is Steve there? The man. He's in Vegas. I've never even oh, met okay. him. I've saw. I've tried to communicate with him on the phone, but every time I've tried to communicate, they've shut me down and turned my phone. Oh, gotcha. Off and well, you know. Okay, so they're trying to suppress information. They're suppressing the yeah. information from somebody that's been inside Area 51, a dad that's yeah. worked in Area 51 and has information from inside Area 51. I, I don't doubt that they're trying to shut that information down. So that's why we're broadcasting live. And it's hard to, you know, we've been, we've had broadcasting uh, issues with technical uh, jamming going on. But here's the other question. There's, what are these, a question came in earlier on the chat. Could you tell us what kind of materials these uh, these alien uh, flying saucers, Starcraft, are made out of? You know, it's it's uh, it's aluminum titanium, special made, but it's a virus. When they, my dad built the motor the first time in the '60s with uh, Charlie Brown, it was considered a, a cold. And when we started working on it, my dad said this is going to be great because it never dies if you don't want it to, and you can program it what you want. So when they put it in a car, you know, of course the kit car came out talking, but nobody really understood why the kit car was talking. Then the Transformers came out, and they said, oh, look, Transformers aren't real. Yes, they are. Dark Shadows, which I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but Dark Shadow is considered a, a soapy that was watched in the 60s. And what it is, is it was based, when they do their codes, they use them off of movies as of, you know, but anyways, Dark Shadow is a submarine stealth that was built then. And this to the submarine and goes down into the water by where the zoo is. And that's why I went into the stealth with my dad. And then we transformed into, on, landed onto the submarine. It went into it. And then it went down into the water. And then we saw, of course, I tell you when... People aren't going to believe the things. And I used to tell my kids, you know, it's all real. They, they took the genetics, and now they're going to prove the genetics, and they're going to approve it. So everybody's going to know the truth once they start saying, hey, look, you want to make me a build a dragon? I got a dragon right here. You want it? I just made it. Ten years ago, when they brought these two girl, this girl and this boy here to Las Vegas, everybody knew these three giant ships came in. And they told us, and Bush was the one who said, they were fined $1 million each for bringing these children to Earth, and they took them to Switzerland. Now, I know that Switzerland is where the elves are, so, of course, that's where you're going to live, right? That's where the high and mighty live, if you are somebody. But, you know, the DNA and all of these things that you know about these ships, I mean, I call him John Travolta because we never use the original name, and you know what I'm talking about. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. I can take it and put, like, a, a part together that they did. Like, we played called Mindflex, and we played, like, the spirograph that they showed the dimensions of the flowers and how to build the motor. And uh, the jellyfish in the crop field, that was to show that in the 70s, they took a jellyfish and took the DNA because the jellyfish does not get sick. It doesn't, can't burn. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't need oxygen or a kidney needs oxygen. There were so many things about it. They used that DNA to start making it in. And when they started doing that, they realized there's a species out there that was involved with it. And they had to ask permission, you know, and like, you no one believes it. But 
if you really want to know the truth about Obama and all them, they're the greatest people. You know, Obama, Hillary, because they all been to places we've never been to. They've been to Mars. Okay, there's a college on Mars. There's a college. There's, stand there's by, a stand by, challenge. Stand by. Sorry, sorry. We just up. I have a area code 360 caller calling in, and he's been. Um, he has a 92 year old father that has worked at a military installation, and he was a. Uh, you can pretty much tell you that alien technology existed. I just want to make sure if uh, we might have the father online. Uh, oh, 360, you're live. Oh, hey, how's it going, Blake? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. Did your uh, 92 year old father uh, make it tonight? Uh, he didn't. He didn't make it. Uh, I did talk to him a little bit more. Um, my information, all well, is uh, awesome to me. <laughs> Uh, compared to what Charles is saying, it's blowing my mind. <laughs> hey, hey, if you got any, uh, if you got questions for Charles, by all means, feel free to ask. Yeah. Um, yeah, my question would be, um, you know, you're talking about these genetics. Um, are are they responsible, in your opinion, for some of the uh, just totally bizarre stuff we're seeing nowadays in going on? Yes. Yes. Well, see, yeah. they have to change the atmosphere. When you pull in another planet, that's already going to change our atmosphere. But we're actually going into the middle of the galaxy to the to this giant hole thing that was called the mixing bowl. And there's like, there's like bases out there. And different bases are different species that we got to come across of dimensions. So eventually we're supposed to see this beautiful thing where we're going to go swirling around and our colors and our eyes and everything's going to like, change this genetic eye thing going on, but we'll, we'll still be the same as we are, but we will realize that what's in front of us, there'll be dimensions. You'll see the, the six, you'll see, you'll see the Arcturians. I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful glow, glow lights. And when you sit around them, your, your body starts shaking and your genetics will actually start trying to like form and you, you, everything you think you know now, you don't even have a clue of what you really are. And what they're doing is they want to bring the species out and say, look, when this person says, well, guess what? I've been here this many years, and I'm a Rennie. I call them Rennies or Semis, like the, you know, the Olympics. When you do this, the water turned green. Did you notice in the pool? The other water, they use the excuse, oh, the water, the water. We didn't have enough chemicals. They had to change the chemical status. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, one more quick question. Um, are we going to see this kind of stuff in our lifetimes? I mean, it seems to me that things are speeding up exponentially here. Hello? Yep. Before we get to uh, Chalice's uh, answer to you, sorry about that. I was just wanting to uh, get a quick uh, question into you. What about your fa- your 92-year-old uh, grandfather? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, he basically confirmed for me that um, primarily after the incident in Roswell, there were uh, six members. Um, they, they primarily set to one for each um, of these alien entities uh, – uh, that they had, as I say, uh, three of them were deceased at the time. Uh, two were still, they were trying to figure out how to keep them alive. Um, so, you know, there were three people dealing with, um, the deceased ones and, uh, you know, doing the dissections and everything else related to that. And, um, uh, then, you know, there was a whole nother crew that wasn't involved, uh, in the entities, um, that were just working on the actual uh, hardware side of things. And he, he only saw like, you know, bits and pieces of this cause he wasn't primarily there for that, but he, you know, was high enough um, and had been there long enough where, you know, he got brought in on some of this. And um, so that was great because it's great to hear some of this stuff finally. And, um, you know, as I say, they, uh, he'd only been down, as far as level six below the base, but he believed that there were far more levels than that, at least um, another three, possibly another six 
um, as far as he knows. And that was a little while ago. Um, the last time he was exposed to anything related to this was um, around 1982. And um, so, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on related to um, the living beings while they uh, they kept – well, one of them died soon after he. They kept it alive for about two months, and um, the number six uh, they kept alive for approximately a year, maybe um, a year and a couple months, and uh, tried to get um, some type of information out of it. Um, it wasn't exactly in the greatest health, so I'm not exactly sure what um, what they were able well, to get from it. That species was like a locust, is what I call them. Um, but the J rods, I call them a rod because they're alphabetically done. That was J that lived 50 years. Um, he was there just for, to show us he's from the year 2748 or something like that. And he told me that, you know, first we were, I, I was thought that we all changed this way. No, no, we just live among all these species like we do animals. And, there are still wars that go on because of the species and there are stuff like that. But yeah, they, he, he got out of there, but they, they, if they really cared about that kind of thing about their species and they would have came and got Jay, they would have came and got him. They came and they attacked the base and they didn't take Jay. So we didn't understand that. We were like, why would they do that? But they didn't care about their species. If you, they're the way they look at it is, he chose to come here to earth to warn us that they were going to do these things to us. But then everyone said, Oh, you got red eyes. Well, yeah, he wears contacts because there's two suns. It's really hotter then. And there are things that are changed, but people think that if you put a planet next to us and all these things that they're going to hit us and it's going to do all this, no, they can control every detail. So I'm not afraid of that. When I see a planet coming in, I'm going to say, wow, there it is. But what's amazing is when you take your phone and you know, I don't look at any star without putting my phone up to the sky and saying, that's Jupiter, that's Mars. I hate it when someone looks at me and says, oh, that's a star. Uh, do you know what star it is? You have to know these things. They think you're ignorant if you don't know what you're looking at. So when I put up to the moon the other night, I recorded the moon and I recorded the planet that was below it. And it was a quarter moon and it was beautiful and it wouldn't come up on my phone. The moon wouldn't come up. Not even the planet. Nothing would come up. So it's an illusion or what? They would not let me see. And the moon was nowhere to be found. And I moved it all around the atmosphere. And where's our moon? So then I thought, okay, if we're not looking at our moon, it kept coming up Virgo. And I was like, what? <laughs> How is that possible? You know, it's like, Tell it doesn't make no sense. Tell us. Let me, uh, let me interrupt real quick. There's people in the chat line saying that uh, you're not real. You don't exist. Your uh, your story, you have too much information. May I uh, may I share your Facebook just on the chat line, just so people know who Chalice is. You know, your technology Facebook. today, you can't hide anything. You can show anything because you can't hide anything. So I can share your yeah. Facebook uh, link on just I put it right here on the blog. No problem. Yeah. It's not a problem. Go ahead. Because look, anytime they want to look up or anything I can look up, I can go up into any activity log of any person and show that my phone will give me any answer on any person anywhere at any time. The technology of the cube is called the answer. It can tell you the future, the past, the time, the date, the second. And if you use it and you know how and you have those chips in your body, you will be aware of these things that are all around you. Especially if you get the one chip that says, look, that is a species of Rennie. That's, a, you know, uh, all of these. So, don't anything but you know, the yeah, but, you know, the, the thing is, is, honey, anybody can do what I'm doing. It's not impossible. You, I live in Vegas. They always keep me on Tropicana for some reason. And you, you know that if they wanted me gone, they'd have me gone. I love the best part is when I go down to the Excalibur and I see the portal right there and people walk right by it. Like they don't even see it. And I, and I show everybody, I say, look, this is a portal. You can go in it right now and see the reality of your life. But people are, no, they'd rather not admit to it. It's like I've seen people start banging their heads on walls 
slapping their hands, and I've had preachers yell at me, and I'll look at them and go, okay, let me just prove something to you, and then I'll prove it to them, and then they'll start banging themselves because their mentality is so afraid of the change. They cannot cope with it. But the truth is, if we do not cope with this soon and admit what is around us and stop pretending that's not real, I'm afraid, I don't want to deal with it, they can do what they want Absolutely. And, just, and you know, the Walmart here by the base, it's a super yeah. store. So I went there and I thought, okay, I'll just go right in here and we'll go shopping. It's closed. So then I said, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We just was in the store. They, they closed it down. So I recorded it and put it on my thing. So if you go on my little thing, you'll see where I recorded. My whole life is there. I'm, I'm real. I'm just a grandma and and my grandkids, they're around me 24-7, coming and going, and they're seeing what I'm seeing. So if you try to tell my granddaughter or my grandson this isn't real, they'll look at you and go, my grandmother has shown me the truth. And, you know, Francis, she saw, you know, Guardian himself come visit me. And that hadn't, I never had that happen for years. So I thought I was like, oh, maybe it's not real. Maybe it was all fake. Maybe, you know, because everybody said shut up. But it is real. And it's in front of us. And I don't understand why the government doesn't want to come clean. Because, see, look, if, if they do this, then humanity can actually become what we deserve. We deserve. We, we need to know that what we're going up against is a different species. They look like us. They breathe like us. But it's a different species. They're not trying to kill us. They don't want to hate us. They, don't want, to be, they want to be like us. Just like, you know, when, when we had the war with the Japanese, they wanted everything American, but they, yet they're fighting us, you know, just like the Russians. They love everything. But if you go to the space station, they're all family. It doesn't matter where you're from. And they understand because they're standing up against these other beings. And NASA had to shut down that feed because now the saucers are, they're, they're done. They said it. The Pleiadians and all of them said it. We're done. You stop trying to hide us. Technology is going to move forward. They're going to know everything. Now, the thing is, is do you look before you cross the street? Four people were sh- just run down here in Vegas. And when they're run down, they use the excuse, uh, well, they were in the crosswalk, but uh, they didn't push the button. Oh, they were in the crosswalk, but it was late at night and no one could see them. How come these people aren't going to jail? Why are they running them down? There's so much going on here by the base, and now they're getting ready. And it's kind of scary because, you know, people, as long as they say, hey, it's not real, they can trick you. And if you think, you know, they can't put a, a, a well in the middle of an auditorium, which I showed you, the holographic, they can do anything and make it look like the end of the world's coming. And everybody would be stupid and say, oh, look, let's just start robbing the sure. stores and let's sure, do sure. all this false stuff. Flag, false flags are all over the place. And the holographic uh, – Technology is getting pretty amazing. Let me tell you, it's getting where they could pretty much project a massive UFO invasion right now if they wanted to. But they're probably trying to work out the glitches here. Tell us, there's a lot of callers there. Maybe they got some questions for you. Let's bring them in. Area code uh, 773. You got a question for Chalice? Nope. 773 is dropping out. Let's uh, bring in uh, another caller. You there? You got a question for Chalice? Hello? All right. Uh, I don't know. A lot of callers. If I name out your area code, please uh, respond or we'll have to drop you. 573. Got a question for Chalice? Strange, strange. Let's uh, see. We got F1 on. F1's probably got a question. How you doing, F1? Hey, what's up, guys? Doing good, doing good. Hey, cool. I'm glad that Chalice. Right, how you back. doing? Doing good. Yeah, you know what's funny is that uh, Chalice just sparked something. Um, what's that? It's funny when when she talks, I seem to just resonate exactly. She she sparks things that are right there that I don't ha- come out with until she says something. So here's what I'm talking about. When she says, and I've said, I don't understand why the government doesn't come clean because we'd be able to get to the, to the spot that we're supposed to. Well, it kind of, the answer came right to me. 
why the hell would they want our army to get stronger when they're clearly not here to help us? They're not. Most of their technologies are bad for business. Yeah, bad for their business. Because look, if if you knew that that you you the, the military has so much more than they're even telling people about guns about. They have a thing where you just throw it in the fire and the fire will end. Well, you wouldn't be paying all these firefighters if they were having that technology, would you? And now they're saying they're going to stop all this other stuff. So we're not redundant. We're human beings, and we are powerful, and uh, God is on our side. I know a lot of people don't believe in the creator, but they'll chew you up and spit you out. You tell one of them there ain't one. They think you're redundant. The thing is, is when they come and talk to you, they make it very clear what kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be the one that's out there saying, hey, we can change this. We can do this together. We are all going to survive. we got a great future coming, and it's our technology. We've invented it. They may have gave it us a lot of it. We still earned it. If you go to school and study in college and you do all the work, does it mean you didn't earn it because you got the degree? No, you earned it. And this is where we have the right to say, hey, look, we need to know. There are places on Mars. There's Jupiter. Pieces out there, and these things are coming and going, and they're making us look stupid because these cities are right in front of us, and these places are right there, right there, and we're looking up and saying we don't see it. Tell us, they don't want you to see it. Tell us. Huh? How old were you when you first met J. Rod? I think it was like five or six. It was right after a dog bit me. Yes, yeah. You were uh, vicious, viciously mauled by a dog. So, what school hey, were you going to? At, what school were you going to at that time? Actually, what's just crazy because uh, Google Plus has a hard time with this one because I went from Decatur, Illinois, straight to uh, the base that was um, oh, where I lived in Costa Mesa, Catalina Island, Catalina Island. And Catalina Island is where John Wayne and my dad and everybody hung out there. And there was a lot more involved in in this situation. And so we were moved from Catalina Island and we moved back to Costa Mesa. But between Catalina Island and Costa Mesa, that's when I was at Area 51 mostly every day. And I didn't come home until we moved to Costa Mesa. I was two when we moved to Costa Mesa. So we lived in Catalina Island like until I was five. So you're you're a young you're a young child when you came across an extraterrestrial J Rod and then you you went to school. So did you ever tell any of your classmates about your experience? Oh, yeah. everybody. I told everybody. Nobody believed me. There was a girl that came to stay with us named April. My dad was doing genetics and they said in nineteen forty five they could start removing all DNA of disease. And so this woman, she comes to our house and she says you know, Tracy, I need you to, uh, I need to have a child and I have all these diseases. Me and my husband will pay you like $50,000. Well, the problem with the genetics then is they could only make 50 instead of one child. But nobody knew that then. And when April was born and she was growing up with me and I went to school with her, I fell in love with her. She played guitar. She was my best friend. We both went to Era 51 back and forth. She knew everything, and we, it was like common sense to everybody. We were supposed to all be aware of this until the change happened, and then everybody was forgotten. But she was killed in a car accident with her dad. So the wife comes back, and she says, Tracy, you know, I gave you all this money, and now I've got nothing, no husband, no child. And he goes, well, I got one more, but we'll try it. Well, this one didn't even know me, looked exactly like April, did not act like April, she did not even play guitar. She didn't do anything, but her mom loved her. But she started getting depressed because she knew she belonged at Era 51. She was too old. So I told her, I said, I could be your friend. She's like, I don't need friends. They're very loner, self beings So I said, all right, fine, okay. I stayed away from her. Well, within a year, the exact same date that she was brung in and her dad and her mom or the sister was killed, she committed suicide. So then she came back to my dad and she said, Tracy, what about – now what? And he says, I got one more, but I'm, not, I'm telling you now, you have to change everything. We've been doing this. You take the twins and you put one on one side of the coast of the world and the other one on the other side of the coast. 
and they still name their kids the same and they still do all this and they'll have that genetics form. But don't ever let her know her name. Don't let her know her mom and dad. I mean, her dad died and her sister died on this date. And she's lived a whole life. And I don't, I have not heard of her since, you know, we moved away from Costa Mesa, but I heard she lived her whole life happy, you know, and my dad said that they did it. They were, they were very proud, but that's when the truth came out that they had to make 50. But this is where, when I went to era 51 and before they built that thing that everyone always takes pictures of where they do the, the portals from here to that place, to this place of those uh, planets, um, there was children there. And I always talk this to all the other kids. These children look like me. They, they all had like a light blue eyes and green eyes and I, blonde hair and I had white hair, you know. And so when you uh, see these kids, you tell yourself they're normal like anybody else, right? You're just going to go play and I like candy bars. So everything was normal for these things. But when you learn that you can take called MindFlex. Now, I've tried to get this. This, this game's $40. MindFlex is where they control your mind and it opens up this ability that you see the other dimension. So we would sit around and we would play this MindFlex and these kids could make this ball get up and go through all these little hoops and then do a little twirl and I'd be like, why can't I do that? And it would take me a long time to get that ball to go through and I still think they cheated and helped me because they had some kind of compassion for me. But I don't know. I didn't believe in myself like that. I, I just felt like they were special because they were really good to me but they didn't talk. It felt like something out of a scary movie when they all look at you and you just feel this chill, but they're all thinking and they expect you to think what they're thinking. And this is where this species is very clear. They look human, but they think they don't talk. And if you don't use your brain and you start thinking, Oh, look, the weather over there and all this and that, they know they can say, Hey, guess what? Well, I went over here to uh, Fremont street and I took my son and my grandkids and we went after dark. I didn't know that it had changed here in town. And Fremont Street was species of three different types. And they called this one guy the puppet master. Now, this guy was actually, he was telling people to come around us. And I recorded where this man came up behind my husband at a trash can and was trying to grab something from his back. And my husband kind of goes, get away from me. Don't touch me. Suddenly, Bill got sick, and then we started trying to get out of there. Then we grabbed the grandkids, and they started surrounding us. It looked like something out of a scary movie. So I said, I'm going back there. Well, just about three weeks ago, my husband takes me down there during the day, and we don't see anything of those species. We just see what we see a lot of naked people, you know, but not as compared at night, where you're seeing a man with his privates hanging out, and he's in a G-string, and I'm telling you, there's nothing covered. And you don't take your kids there no more. It's not like it used to be, not after dark. And when they do this, they change. And they were doing weird things like they would, this one guy came up to us three times and he thought we were stupid or something because he put a hat on. Oh, wait a minute. Was the same jacket? It's a different jacket. That's all you did was change a jacket. Like we're not that, you think we're stupid humans? We know the difference of the same person walking up to us. And they walked us clear out of the thing. To, so, and what was crazy was the Orientals. Now, they were really nice, but they were, like, standing around us to protect us. Now, what is that up with it? Because what have they got to do with it? So, and then we saw um, maybe a gray. So I said, okay, wait a minute. Now, if they're actually in Vegas and they're that blatant about it and nobody is even noticing and I'm watching and my, my granddaughter's out there dancing, and they're like two and three years old. And then they start to cry, and they say, what's going on, Anna? What are these people doing to us? I'm sorry, baby. Come on, let's go, because it's getting really freaky. So you can be in a place where you know that this other species can read your thoughts, and they know, hey, guess what? Guess who you are? You're callous, and you're telling the world about us. Now, you're either going to be good about it or you're going to be bad. I want you to be good because I love my family. I don't want to lose my children and I don't want to lose my life here on earth because this is where we come to come home and live. And we chose to love the human just like we do our own children. Now the DNA has actually got into the highest genetic form. Now they have found out the time, how to get here, which is a big thing because humans were the only ones that had time. That's it. They didn't know what time was. So when they finally had the time, then they had to get the coordinates. 
by the time they got the dimensions from the art, 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 art that's when they said, we got it. Now they can have the truth if they want it. Okay? So I really believe with any of my heart, open your eyes. It's right in front of you. You can say the technology isn't there, but have you ever said to your phone, wow, I need to buy a car today, and suddenly you've got all these things on your phone. Well, you have a mistake, or you say, oh, you're lying to me. I can get on my phone and show to any kid, you lied to me, you were at this, this uh, stop sign, you ran it in your car at this exact moment. How do you know that technology? It's, it's there. And they, they get mad. Grandma, you got eyes in the back of your head. No, I got technology on the top of my hand. It's called a cube. And this is just a technology called the dumb phone, which won't tell you the future, won't tell you all this, unless you know the right questions. So I started learning the engines because my dad said the engines are the most important part of the genetics, the engine. So you got to think, when you see these things flying around, and I tell you, you can take it and fill the planet as easy as putting a drop of water in, the, in space and putting the dark matter around it and then putting in, let's say, some dirt from Earth, genetics of, of a human being, and then you go and you put in, you know, your chip, and then you have it all programmed. This thing's going to be alive, a ball, walking around, not a rolling. It can change shape. It can sleep. It can fly. It can breathe. And you're telling yourself, how is that possible? Well, how does a jellyfish work in water? Well, now it works in space. Well, if you know other planets, you know that Jupiter had a jellyfish that flies through the air upside down. And it's in the air. It's not on the ground or in the water. Now, this new species that I've been talking to is a really great species because they're from a planet called a water planet. And they made their first girl human genetic form. And she is beautiful. And she is kind. And she said that if she could stay here on Earth and be as happy as, as anybody else, she would love it. But most people would look at her and say, oh, my God, she's a demon. Because she has gills. Because she has eyes. She has nails. She's like claws, you know. And, but... You know how long they've tried to make a woman from this, and they did it. And so this is the only last one, the last steps of what they need. Now, with all this other politics going on, I can't vote. I can't decide anything because I was hoping that Hillary would be our ambassador, being she's the one who talks to all these species anyways. 